In this case, I'm gonna use a wall rail as my example, but briefly it just says, when do I need it? After four or more risers, again, if it's a interior stair, exterior stair, I don't care, the code says, it shall have a railing handrail after four risers, four or more risers. So where does it go? Pretty simple. Code says 34 to 38 inches. That's a little sweet spot right here. You can kind of figure that out with your own hands. But 34 to 38, not 32, not 42, but 34 to 38 inches as measured from the nosing of the stairway up to the top of the rail. That's where the inspector is going to measure from nosing to top of rail, 34 to 38. You can hit that sweet spot. And a couple of other little notes on that wall rail. Code says there must be a minimum of inch and a half clearance between the actual railing itself and the wall. Most brackets that are put out will almost get you there naturally, but don't assume that the carpenter got it right. Make sure you got that at least inch and a half in there. And then all wall rails are going to return to the, the wall. These railings are supposed to be continuous from the bottom riser up to the top riser, I have to have a continuous handrail. If I close my eyes, grab that railing, I should be able to go up that stairway and follow that railing all the way around. That's a continuous handrail. There are a few exceptions. If the most common one is a landing, I'll go up maybe eight risers, there's a landing, maybe it turns 90 or 180 degrees and then goes up behind me. That one, that's considered two flights. So I will have one handrail on this first flight. It'll stop at the landing and I'll walk around, I'll go up the next flight and there'll be another railing on that one. Um, again, a minimum of one rail on one side of the stairway. You can have two, but the code says at least one side shall have this thing. Pretty simple rules on continuity. So really that's about it.